we have breaking news as the Israeli Defense Minister announces a full-scale offensive. Hello and welcome back to another update as we cover the latest developments in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And let's get started with the territorial changes as the Israeli powers have managed to completely push back the Palestinians back over the Gaza line, which was the ceasefire line of 1950. There is still some gray zones as the Israelis are clearing some of these areas, but most of the Gaza forces have been pushed back to Gaza and Israelis essentially have full control over the previous borders prior to the initial offensive by the Palestinians. So what we're seeing is that with the rapid developments and the two days which just proceeded with intense Israeli bombardments of Gaza, We've now seen that the Israeli defense minister, after building up huge amounts of troops and continuously building these troops up, they have now announced a full-scale offensive on Gaza. This comes at the same time as there's heavily increased tensions with the border with Lebanon as the Israelis and the Lebanese Hezbollah have been fighting over the past few days with mutual shelling. And recently, the Lebanese Hezbollah managed to blow up a Israeli tank. As a response to that, the Israelis then stormed two outposts on the border. And the situation continues to escalate in this direction. So most likely, we are also going to see an escalation in this part of the front. As soon as the Gaza offensive starts, where the Israelis storm Gaza, the Hezbollah alliance has said that they would attack Israel in that case. So most likely we're seeing a two-front war for Israel where they'll be fighting the Palestinians in Gaza and the Lebanese in the north. So this will be a two-front war to the north and to the south of the state. The Palestinians in Gaza are realizing that the current way the war is going is not preferable to them. So they, on earlier today, sent a message to the surrounding Muslim and Arab countries stating that this Friday is a Friday where they want everyone to mobilize, whether it be Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Lebanon, or even the West Bank. They want everyone to join them on that day. That is what they say this Friday. Whether or not anything will happen is completely up to how much they have managed to inspire the surrounding countries because what is well known is that all of these countries, whether it be Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and so on, they all support Palestine over Israel. So they, based on the historical facts that they have fought three wars on the side of Palestine, and the general, I mean, it's obvious. So they want these countries to support them. The issue here is that it is not organized, and it takes a long time to actually plan something like this, mobilizing your forces and so on. So this is actually a huge risk that they're taking and there's hardly a possibility for anything to happen except for a few ones. For example, we have Lebanon and the West Bank. They could possibly join. There's also the thing that the United States have sent the aircraft carrier to Israel. And in that scenario, we see that the Houthis in Yemen have announced that if the United States participates in this war, for any reason, then they will participate as well. The logistics of how Yemenis will go to Israel is up to question, but they have said it. So we are seeing that multiple organizations, also the Iraqis and the Syrians, some Syrian groups have said that they want to support uh, Palestine, especially if the United States participates. So there is this possibility of an escalation even further based on that. Well, let's go back to the recent developments as the Israeli forces have managed to completely recapture the borders with Gaza. In the southern parts, they managed to capture the checkpoint here by the border between Israel and Egypt. With this, they managed to then push northwards from these positions along the borderline, attacking the Palestinian positions from three directions, from the south, from the west, and from the north. So in these directions, we have seen that they managed to actually push out most of the Palestinian forces. There's still some left around and they're doing some cleaning operations, but essentially most of the Palestinian forces were pushed back into Gaza. And this is similar what's with what happened here in the central parts, where after the advances here to the west and to the north of these positions, the Israeli forces then made a pincer maneuver from the north and from the south to 
push their Palestinian forces back into Gaza. And in the northern parts by Sterot, there was a lot of back and forth fighting between Sterot and Gaza as it is right next to the border. But the Palestinians again were pushed out and back into Gaza. In the northern parts, it was more straightforward as the Israeli forces just launched attack after attack against the Palestinian forces head on, fighting them face to face. And with that, they are now in a position in which they can start an offensive against Gaza. And the defense minister has announced it being an all-out offensive where all limitations are lifted. So how exactly would such an offensive look like? Based on the geography of Gaza, we can see it is a long urban area. There's essentially nothing but urban area throughout the whole area. And we see that the Palestinians are spread thinly across this urban area as it is not very wide but it's long so there's multiple possibilities as to how the Israelis would launch such an offensive. The first one is going on a straight line trying to keep the front as short as possible moving through slowly but surely across the whole area but this is unlikely to be their strategy as that would allow the Palestinians to gain as much as an advantage as possible because they have limited numbers in comparison to the Israelis. Therefore, if the Israelis spread their forces, they're able to focus more at the same time, and as such, they would be able to spread out the Palestinian forces, and in that way, they'll have the most out of their numerical superiority. So most likely what we'll see is a multiple assault offensive from the southern parts, where they'll try to split the Palestinian Gaza into multiple parts, here in the south, and then moving upwards, every single offensive will have their own part and they'll try to split up the Palestinians as much as possible. Meanwhile, we also have the border crossing by Rafa. This is most likely going to be a main target for the Israelis because they want to cut off all possible support between Egypt and the Palestinians. So this is most likely going to be step one of the offensive, cutting off the Rafa border crossing. Then we'll most likely see them splitting off Gaza into bigger parts and then slowly, surely split them up further. So that is defeat in detail where they essentially split up these areas and then they gather their forces in specific areas and fight them one by one as they try to split the areas and hold those splits for as long as possible for them to be able to destroy Gaza one by one. The Palestinian countermeasure to such a tactic would be using their underground tunnels in between the different areas. They have multiple underground tunnels all throughout Gaza, connecting the different areas with each other and connecting the same areas with each other, as well as a connection between Egypt and Palestine. This is most likely how they get most of their weaponry across through these tunnels, because if they do it overground, they're subject to reconnaissance from the Israeli forces. And this is most likely how they build up their forces prior to their offensive if they were underground hiding until the day they advanced. That is how they most likely avoided all of the surveillance. Then there's the question of the Israeli intelligence, whether or not they have spies and reconnaissance over the communications between the Palestinians. But the solution for the Palestinians would be to speak mouth to mouth and to avoid spies if the Israelis have any. As for the northern parts, we'll have to take a look at the history from the last battle between the two sides, between Hezbollah and Israel. That happened in 2006, but that requires a lot more research, so we'll have to postpone that until later. But most likely we'll also see a war unfolding here on the north, which would force the Israelis to split their forces between the south and the north. At the same time, they'll also have to leave forces around the West Bank, to avoid any escalation by the Palestinians here. They will also need to relocate some troops in the southern parts and in the eastern parts to avoid further escalations either by Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Jordan or Syria throughout this whole process. Especially since the Americans promised that if any other side other than Gaza joins the war against Israel, then they would help Israel defend themselves with their super aircraft carrier, which they provided here in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. If they participate against Lebanon, then there's further escalation and so on. So that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.